So in today's video, we're going to talk about relevance as a concept for understanding how good search engines are. Uh, and that's because, so in the last two videos, we've talked about uh, how search engines index different web pages. And then after that, we looked at how search engines rank different web pages. Uh, the links for both of those are in the description below. So in one of the comments in the last video, someone asked about relevance. Uh, because this is a pretty fundamental concept to search engines. Deciding if a result in the search engine is relevant or not relevant is kind of a key stage. And there's lots of different ways you can use that to evaluate how good your search engine is. So in order to discuss relevance, what we need is several things. We need a set of things we're going to search for. So for this, we're using my handy Monopoly pieces. And then we need a set of documents, which we've got here, which are results that this search engine could return. So then a third thing is a list of which results are relevant uh, for the search that you're looking for. And for this, I'm using nice big red hotels for things that are relevant and small greenhouses for things that are not relevant. So then ultimately what a search engine wants to do is to only return the relevant ones. So just to get all the hotels out, that would be nice if our search engine just retrieved all of these and not get any of the houses back. That would be the ideal situation for any search engine. And that would be true for whatever we searched for. Now, this is obviously not necessarily very easy to do. So what we tend to have is two measures. One is precision and one is recall. Now, recall is the a measure of how many of the relevant ones we managed to get back. So if we managed to get all of these hotels back nicely, then what we have is 100% recall. But what's more likely is that we managed to get some portion of them back. And so we have maybe 70% recall. Now, the second thing is we want is precision. And this is the number of returned results which are actually relevant. So say my search engine brought back these results, then its precision is what five out of nine, which is a random a number of results to return. So let's do that. That's five out of 10. So it's got 50% precision now. In this case, its recall was five out of a possible I should have figured out how many there are of these, so there's 13. So the recall here is five out of 13, and the precision was five out of 10. So in order to compare all of these different algorithms we've produced to make our search engine better, what we want is a nice score to be able to say what we've done. So a score for precision is the number of results that you returned, which were relevant, divided by the overall number of results that you returned. So this would be five divided by 10. If you want a score for recall, then what you're doing is you're taking the number of relevant results you return divided by the total number you could have returned, which is five divided by 13. Not an easy number to immediately come up with. So if we take a single measure which combines both precision and recall, we have what's called the F measure. And the simplest form of the F measure is two divided by, one divided by the precision plus one divided by the recall. It's, yeah, there's more complicated versions which add some weights and some likelihood of errors and things like that. Um, but the simplest version is that uh, simple comparison. And all that's doing is saying, if I get a good uh, precision score and a good re uh, recall score, then I'll get a good F measure score. People have produced sets of results where there are maybe a million results that could be returned. And they've pre-decided on six different searches that we will go for. And they have pre-decided that for this search, a certain set of documents are ones which are relevant. And for this search, there's a different set of documents that are relevant. So what we have is a known set of documents, a known set of searches, and a known set of right answers. And search engines have used this principle, which is called the Cranfield paradigm, uh, for about 60 years to improve search engines. So every, every time one research uh, university or people from Google or Bing say, uh, we've got an improvement to our algorithm, which we think is going to be better. Uh, they can take a known set of data sets, a known set of results, a known set of right answers, and they can say, based on these in our algorithm, we get a score which is slightly better. And that score might be higher precision, or it might be higher recall. There's actually a number of different uh, measures. But it means essentially everybody's been able to compete for 60 years uh, on who can get the best algorithm. So if we wanted to build a system which always achieved 100% recall, that would be very easy. I've just returned everything. And in there, I definitely have 100% recall because I definitely got everything. But that's not necessarily good. But if you wanted 100% recall, that would work. Another way to get the answer you want is if you want to make sure you always get 100% precision would be to just take your very best answer and say, I'm pretty confident that's going to be a good one. I've got 100% precision. I only returned one and it was relevant, but I missed out on lots of things. So our aim tends to be, I want to get as many as the answers as possible. So I want to get high recall but I want to do that without losing precision. So tell me again what, what it is. It's two divided by, one divided by precision plus one divided by recall. And so then what we can get is 
My set of results that I returned for this has one specific F score. So now I'm gonna bring in my separate set. So my first algorithm is bringing back my nice uh, retro wooden houses and hotels. And my brand new algorithm, which is going to make me a million pounds, is gonna use these shiny plastic hotels and houses. So we go, two separate algorithms. We did one search, which was my shiny car, but both algorithms returned six relevant results and four not relevant results. And so it doesn't really matter what our F-score is because the F-score is the same for both of them. We didn't manage to differentiate between which algorithm was better. So we start to ask questions, how do we decide which algorithm is better? And the first way of doing this is to say, well, a better algorithm, if it's gonna return six good ones out of 10, it's gonna put those six good ones higher than the other one. So if one algorithm is producing relevant, relevant, uh, not relevant, 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 not relevant, and so on, down to the bottom, then a better algorithm would have relevant, 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 and then not relevant afterwards. So what we want is a measure that will say, this result set is better than that result set. And so for this, what we use is an average precision score. And to calculate average precision, the easy form of what we do is for every result we bring in, we give it a score of one if it's relevant, and we divide it by the fact we brought in a new number. So here we have, we brought in one new result, and we divide it by one because that's how many documents we brought in. Here we have another relevant result, so we've got two relevant ones now, and we divide it by the fact that we've got two so far. Next time though, we didn't get a relevant result, so we're still only at two relevant ones, but we've brought three in. And then here we're at three for four, four for five, four for six, oh no, five for seven, and so on, down to the bottom. But over here we had one for one, two for two, three for three, four for four, and so on, to the point here where we start getting only six for seven. And so then what you do is you add up all these scores to get an average precision score. So here we had, this is one, this is one, but now we get 0 0.6, and then we get 0 0.75 for this one, and 0 0.8 for this one. But over here we had one, 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 and so the sum of these is gonna be lower than the sum of these, and so this is a better response. Even though we got the same number that were relevant back, we put them all at the top and got a higher score for doing it. So essentially he's saying the case we actually got on the left side divided by the ideal case. And so the ideal case is we get them all at the top and here we actually did. What we'd actually like is mean average precision. We'd like to know that we get this type of better answer every single time. So for my shiny car, I got a better result from this algorithm because the good ones were at the top. But for my nice top hat, suddenly we brought all bad results at the top. So this doesn't work for a top hat very well. And even on this one, it got two bad ones quite high up. And so what you want is a score, which is what you got for everything. Even to the point when you bring my awesome horse into the search engine with evil Santa with weapons on top, thanks to my son. Then for this particular score, both of them did excellently because my search engine is optimized on ponyhorse.horse to really bring back horse-based products. But then what your mean average precision score gives you is the average score you got for every single query that you did when you know the answer. So in general, the average score for all searches was higher for this one compared to the first algorithm you had. But if you had only one example where you got good results for my awesome horse, but for everything else you were getting bad results before it, so your mean average precision allows you to say, over all my queries, which one, which algorithm is performing best? It's been a while since we've checked that website. I wonder if it's changed since we last went there. Maybe it has different words in it now. We'll go and check it. And then when it gets there, it says, Ooh. And we use that to sort of triangulate how far away things are. Um, and that's what they're doing here.